JS, welcome to FYI. How are you? Doing great. Glad to be here. Awesome. Thanks for thanks for hopping in. Um, I, you know, I, I reached out a, a few weeks ago. Um, I'm excited to have you on. I think one of the things that we're we're most excited to talk about is you know the world of social media. Uh, the, the the timing is interesting because when as we're recording this podcast yesterday, Facebook and Instagram had a big giant outage, and the internet had a sigh of relief for a few hours. I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, but you know, before we hop into the the topic of the day, uh, for for those who might not follow you on all of the popular social media channels, would love for you to kind of share your background, how you got to where you are, what you do now, um, and then we can kind of go from there. Yeah. Um, so long story short, uh, I've been doing social media marketing for uh, as long as it has been a career. My original intention was to teach literature, but I ended up tweeting instead. Um, I got my start doing social media for the international office at the University of Central Arkansas and little by little doing bigger and bigger accounts, submissions, advising, and wanted to do work for a whole university. At the time, there was mm -hmm. that did not exist at the university I was at. So uh, ran went and found a university that did and was the first full-time social media manager at uh, Texas State University, uh, did a stint in government with the Texas Department of Transportation. And then finally, the university I had been at created that position. And I went and did that at the University of Central Arkansas for a while um, and spent a lot of time in higher ed. And during COVID, just had a bit of a, like a lot of people had just kind of a, you know, time to reevaluate things and ended up working, uh, doing social media in the entertainment industry, freelancing for, uh, the Amazon prime video series invincible, uh, which led to more jobs in the entertainment industry. I've worked on, um, uh, rings of power, uh, for Amazon. I did, um, uh, worked with an agency and worked on, uh, the avatar franchise, uh, the James Cameron, not the airbenders, uh, hmm. and, uh, several other, other properties from working, currently working on, um, has been hotel, um, doing some community management on the Shogun, um, remake and several other things. So it's been, been an exciting turn of events, get to work on a lot of different fun projects. Got it. Yeah. So it sounds like there's a, there's a pretty big difference between working for the avatar franchise and working for like an admissions department at, you know, a, a, a... you'd be surprised how much they have in common, <laughs> like it's, uh, you know, <laughs> Let, so so let's talk about that, right? Like I think that there's a, a, a you know before we started recording, we were talking about how um, you know in higher ed specifically, it seems like there's we're we're always a little behind the world on things related to technology. You know, social media. I I made the joke before, uh, and I've been, I've made it many times on this podcast that you know many in many respects we're still trying to figure out Facebook and. Facebook is now quote unquote dead to the audiences where many of the audiences we're trying to reach. So let, I'd love to kind of hear your, your 10,000 foot view of the cross section of the entertainment industry and higher ed and, you know, how institutions might be thinking differently about social media. Well, there's a, f a few things that are, they have in common few things that are very different. Uh, budgets is the first one, you know, there's a lot <laughs> more budget in, in entertainment than there is, higher ed. Um, but I will say a few things that, that are similar. Some of the struggles just are everywhere. Um, silos exist no matter what job you're in. We think of that kind of as an exclusive higher ed thing because it seems so obvious. Like you have an admissions department, you have athletics, you have advising, you have all these little different constituencies all across mm -hmm. campus vying for things. But the same thing exists in other industries and in, in entertainment, you've got the marketing, but you also have uh, you have a sort of franchise needs. Um, you know, that was one thing that that I have worked on in the past is kind of sort of franchise management via social of being sure every single thing has its time in the sun. You have a a, a big franchise like the Avatar series. Well, you don't just have the films, you have, you know, merch tie-ins. You have even with that, you know, there's you know, you've got to tie in with with Lego, you got to tie in with McFarlane toys, mm. all of these things, and you want to be sure everybody's getting their their moment on social media. And a lot of these constituencies aren't talking to each other. So you're mm -hmm. kind of playing air traffic controller to be sure everybody's needs get met, which is very similar to, to higher ed being a social media manager where it's like, okay, what are we doing for admissions? You know, what are we doing for advancement? All of those things and being sure everybody gets their, their, their moment, moment to shine on the social channels. Um, one thing that, that is different though, you know, I will say, 
you do still have the struggle of trying to explain the value of social media to, to higher ups. You know, there's mm. a lot of folks that still don't get it. Um, even here we are in 2024, people still think, oh, okay, well, you know, social second place, we want to be on, you know, TV commercials and billboards and all of those things. Um, but I will say executives do pay attention to social and the value of social listening uh, and not just how social listening can inform your marketing efforts, but every single thing around your brand. Um, you know, it starts from the beginning. You know, sometimes you know, social listening in the entertainment industry, sometimes for, for smart studios, begins before the films even get made. Uh, you have a studio who, you know, uh, purchases the rights to a shiny new IP. Uh, you know, there's a book series that, you know, is really popular and they're, they've purchased the film rights to it. Well, that's when the social listening begins um, because they, you know, they hire companies. I've worked with one that does the social listening and finds out, okay, you've got this new IP. Here's all the conversation around that book series that's going to get adapted. Here's how many mentions that one specific character has, you know, in, in rankings. Okay, mm -hmm. this is what you have to include when you write the script to keep fans happy. Uh, those sort of things happen on a regular basis. And I think that's something that higher ed can definitely learn from the entertainment industry of like, what are your students saying about your university? And don't limit that to just what is your what photos you're putting in the view book. Think about like what our course offerings are. What are all the way down to like what, you know, what foods are the most popular in the cafeteria? What do yeah. we need to do away with? Uh, of course, you're going to hear a lot of complaints about parking and there's nothing you can do about that. But there are like tangible things that you can change to make your university a better place and better serve your students. Um, you just have to be able to, to sit down and listen to that. And studio execs listen to that, you know, pay attention to those social listening reports uh, as from from the very beginning of the process of making a film. Yeah, I, I think, and I think that's a, a great point. You know, studio execs, what are they looking at at the at the end of the day? They're looking at the performance of that property, right, and mm -hmm. revenue that's being generated, and how is it performing against budget for you know promotion and, and production of whatever it is, right? If it's a Marvel movie, what's the production budget plus the marketing budget? We need to be exceeding that by twenty thousand percent, right? Like that's, uh, and so institutions, it seems like should be looking at social media in a very similar way where it's just translating it to a college and university mindset of, well, impact on enrollment, impact on alumni giving, impact on, you know, community engagement, right? And these are, those are kind of the areas that um, I think, I think college and universities can, colleges and universities rather can uh, potentially improve. Um, I will say one thing I did not, not, I did not hear you say was, just make it go viral, right? And so, how what what is the uh, we have we have this kind of mindset around just like posting flyers to the internet, right? Is a is a is a, a, a mindset that still permeates in a lot of respects. I, I cringe every time I'm on I'm on Instagram and I see one of like my neighboring uh, towns just post something oh, that's just a flyer on the internet. So, what do you say to people who are working in social media roles? that are tasked with doing everything you were just talking about, but then the, the the knock on the door happens or the Slack message comes up and it's, hey, here's a flyer, make it go viral. Um, you have to do pick, pick your battles carefully. You know, I, in my younger, more vulnerable years, I would fight tooth and nail not to put that flyer up. And there are times when like, okay, yeah, you have to be the guardian because if you open the floodgates to one flyer, you're gonna have just tons. Uh, but also there are times when it's just like, hey, I don't have one, I don't have the energy to fight it today. Two, I don't want to start a fight with this dean or, or whoever is mm -hmm. making this request. So um, way it, one one post is not going to break make or break your social strategy. Um, that said, just being education, I think is the most important explaining to those constituencies why this is a bad idea, but also offering something that would work better. Uh, a lot of them don't just, they don't know. Um, one thing during my time in, in higher ed is at least once a semester, I would have a lunch and learn training session of just anybody who wants to come. I'm going to explain 
you know, our social strategy at the university and how you can help and what you can do on your social channels to make it work. Uh, the problem is a lot of those times you're just preaching to the choir. The people that actually need to be there aren't the people that mm -hmm. are going. Uh, but after a while, word gets out. You know, people that on campus talk and go, hey, I went to this lunch and learn. I learned this. Maybe don't send them that flyer. Let's do something different. They kind of advocate for you there. Um, but also just remember, sometimes people are just trying to check off boxes and mm. that happens everywhere. You know, like, OK, we've got this flyer. We got this event. You know, did you contact marketing to put it on social media yet? Uh, whether or not they really care about it, you know, they're just trying to get their box ticked. Uh, and that happens all over. I mean, it's the entertainment industry that you, you see it all the time. When next time you you see you check uh, 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 entertainment properties feed and you see the posts, you know, the countdown, five days till release, or uh, you know, they all kind of have these same sort of beats they feel like they have to hit. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes it's because those beats actually work and they do something. Um, and other times it's okay. Well, this is the box we check off. Uh, so try and know the difference. Like, is this something that you actually need posted or is this something that you're just going down your checklist and, and making sure it happens? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, a, I think, you know, from my purview, I've worked in, you know, higher ed my whole career and I've worked in specifically in marketing, right. And in mark and the challenge that heads of marketing and, and CMOs have is, evangelizing internally for their overall strategy, right? And you you spend so much time learning about students or alumni, whatever, name the audience, right? You, you spend so much time focused on your audience that sometimes you forget that your internal audience needs to buy into your strategy too. And if you don't do that, then your your days are numbered. Even if you have the best strategy in the world, if people aren't don't believe in it, it's, it's not going to matter. And I think at that level of social media management, it's a, it's, it's, it's a mirror of that, right. Where you've, if you're not communicating internally, what you're, what you're doing and why, and when you, when you push back the why that's a, that's a challenge that, that everybody faces. Yeah. I, I think, and, and this is not a struggle that's exclusive to social media marketing or marketing in any way. It's that the things that seem obvious to us are not obvious to everyone, right? We assume everybody knows yeah, links don't work in Instagram <laughs> uh, captions. But no, that is not common knowledge. Uh, those sort of things we have to educate people about. And, you know, your social, that you don't post flyers on social media. You know, mm -hmm. that a QR code on a fly, on an image that's posted to Twitter is not going to generate anything for you. Uh, most people don't know that. And th those things that, you know, we get we get a little too inside baseball and we assume, especially maybe it is worse for social media managers because I think we even fall victim to the it's social media. Yeah. Everybody knows how to do mm -hmm. this yeah. trap, uh, which, which we get upset like, oh, no, you know, there's more to it than that. But then we as social media marketers assume, well, duh, you, how do you not know this? Yeah. Well, it's not obvious to everybody. Um so I think we doing a job, better job of explaining the basics of what we do is, is really important. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. And I think one of the things I'd love to dive deeper on is, um, is, is the mindset of social media managers and how we best how, to understand kind of the, the challenges that they're facing and continue to give them advice on managing up internally for sure. I know one of the things you, you put on your, your LinkedIn is, you know, you say, you say things louder for the people in the back. And so I think what we'll do is we'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll, we'll say some things louder for the people in the back on behalf of social media managers everywhere. So we're, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Thoughtfully nurture applicants, personalize retention efforts, and exceed fundraising goals with our Cadence Engagement Platform's text messaging solutions. Designed exclusively for higher ed by higher ed professionals, Cadence helps you engage your audiences with the perfect balance of AI and personal connection. We leverage an intuitively designed interface and easy to use texting templates so you can have targeted conversations or scale up to expand your reach. Our powerful smart messaging can respond automatically, exactly how you would. And to measure progress, track your campaigns with unparalleled reports and analytics. Effectively meet your community where they are as we proudly feature an industry-leading 95% read rate within three minutes. It's never been easier to make every message count. 
All right, we are back. And we, uh, before the break, we were talking, I mentioned that one of the things on your LinkedIn profile right across the top is I say things louder for the people in the back. And I think that's uh, a, a very um, great jumping off point to talk about the challenges that social media managers face in the in this space. And I'll, so I'll give you a, uh, you know, a, a good example here. One of the things you posted recently about how the jobs of a social media manager and a content creator are two different things, right? And I, I, and it should be two different roles. Clearly you've worked in the higher ed space. There are resourcing challenges. There are time commitment challenges. I'd love for you to kind of share some of your thoughts on that and apply it to colleges and universities and how they might be able to kind of stretch their resources or focus their efforts to, to be most impactful. Yeah, um, I think it's interesting. We talk about social media managers, and I think all, if, if you ask 10 different people what a social media manager does, you'd get 10 different answers. And I think that's valid because the role of a social media manager is going to be very different depending on the industry, the size of the company, uh, so many, many factors, what, what, what the, the talents of the social media manager themselves are. Uh, but I do think we are getting to this point where we expect social media managers to do a lot more than one person is capable of. Uh, there are so many networks now that have so many different features, you know, in, in, you know from in the strategy and being good at writing a tweet versus creating a TikTok video is very different. The community management side of jumping in and like doing the customer service and, and replying to, to, to people, doing the social listening and building strategies, a completely different skill set. There's all these different things. And granted, universities can't hire, you know, full full teams to do all of these. So you have to kind of have a, you know, to, to use the cliche, have find somebody to wear many hats. Um, but I think we need to start rethinking the role of social media manager and frame it more, more like a creative director. Um, you, a social media manager is the person who understands your social channels, understands the strategy, how everything works, what sort of content will perform well on your channels and meet the needs of your audience, and should probably be more in that directorial role of saying, working with your graphic designers that are doing your view book and doing, you know, all of those other things for, for print and website and all of that working with them to create content for social media, working with your videographer and photographers to create con social media specific content. Uh, and that means giving them that time and those resources um, and, and and some of the bandwidth of your creative team to, to build social content, uh, which is a struggle, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that view book is super important. It might be like the bulk of your, your you know, graphic designer's time, but so is that social. Maybe that your social media manager doesn't need to just be taking the scraps uh, all the time, right? Maybe we need to have some some focus on on social content from from that creative team. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, rethinking that and reevaluating, and also like not one person can be a great photographer, graphic designer, videographer, and copywriter all in one, right? Um, so your social media manager probably need needs a hand to, to help build that content. They can't be building strategy and content all at mm -hmm. once. Yeah. And I think one of the things that, you know, to read between the lines a little bit, is how do we, how do we repurpose content most effectively? Because you don't need to reinvent the wheel, but there's that balance of you can't just copy and paste what you say on Twitter, onto Facebook, onto, onto Instagram, because that doesn't work either. Right. And right. so, how do, how do you, you know, if we, if we talk about repurposing kind of best, best thought process and mindset around stretching that content to go as far as you can. So you're not bugging the graphic designer for 16 different things, but you, but you're also making it authentic for the channel. And some of that comes down to just including the social media manager in meetings. And as and nobody wants more meetings, but sometimes the social media manager needs to know things. Um, you know, sometimes you never know like what and, and then uh, where that content is going to come from that can be repurposed. I've been in those meetings where it's like, oh, you're doing that. Hey, can I grab that graphic? I can repurpose that for social. Um, you know, 
Um, a, a good example is, you know, for, for homecoming every year, the university I was at would create, you know, a logo for homecoming you know, in a series mm -hmm. of logos for it. I'm like, Hey, can I get those logos? And I can animate those to turn them into, to Instagram, uh, sticker gifts and, you know, man, more bang for your buck for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and to find those ways and, and social media managers, especially in higher ed have learned ways to be creative because so often what happens is like, we get left with the scraps view. I, I keep harping on view book, but in my head, like view book always, would take priority of the creative team. And it's like, okay, well, what, what are you, what are you making for the view book that I can use? And also that unifies your marketing, right? If mm -hmm. your social content looks like your view book, beautiful, right? Yep. You don't yep. have that disconnect. You don't have that student who gets that shiny view book in the mail and then goes and sees your social channels and it looks completely different. Like find those ways to connect. Um, and, but you know, I, I, as much as I'd love to harp social first, social first, social first, that's not always the case mm -hmm. in higher ed. So we do have to learn, like, how can we find the scraps? Uh, one university I was at every year, the, the president would send out a, you know, holiday card and she would want three different options to pick from. So our design team would make three different ones. One would get picked and two would just end up on the cutting room floor. And I learned very quickly every year. It's like, Whatever she doesn't pick, you know, she gets three choices. I get two, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, you know, she'd pick one and then I'd have two to choose from for a holiday social media post. And generally, I would get the best one because my taste is better. Than there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, you can you can go go with that. So there's so many ways you just have to be in the know. Like, yeah, I, I hate to say it, but part of being a social media manager is just being up in, in people's business and like, Hey, what are you making? <laughs> like, can I have some of that? Right. It's a, it's, I, and I think that's the point is like you said, it, it's never going to be social first. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, social media is a component of the overall marketing plan. You're not going to plan your whole marketing plan around social media. It should be the other way around, but that means that social needs a seat at the table, right. And being a part of those conversations just gives you that window into what's available to use as a resource. I think it's one of those things you see. It's like, you know, when, when a marketing plan comes up, it's like, okay, well, here's what we have for print. Here's our TV spot. Here's all this stuff. And then social is like, well, what, what do we have? And it's like, well, here's some photos I took on my phone, <laughs> you know, post them and see how they do go viral, yep. you know? And I think social needs to be up at that forefront. I think it's every bit as important, if not more than most of our traditional uh, marketing efforts. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, that's, I think that's a good, good segue into what will be the the final part of our conversation. And when we, when we come back from a break, we will hop into advice for social media managers for how to best self-advocate and best be a part of how, how to best get up in people's business, we'll say. Uh, so we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Grow your student community, help them stay, and encourage giving with Cadence, Higher Ed's premier engagement platform from Mongoose. Designed exclusively for higher ed by higher ed professionals, Cadence helps you engage your audiences with the perfect balance of AI and personal connection. Talk to students, parents, and alumni on their time and how they want. Empower your staff with integrated text and chat inboxes that gather all conversations in one place. Reach out to learn more about how our best-in-class service, support, and integrations have helped colleges and universities like yours have smarter conversations. From text to chat, make every message count. All right, we are back. And I think you know, one of the things that most people I, are probably tuning in for is really, you know, tactical advice for social media managers to, to self-advocate, right? And I think we can't cover this topic enough because I feel like, you know, we, especially in the higher ed community, have been harping on this for, for decades now at this point. I'll give you a great example, personal example of mine. I was, when, when I was running social media for an institution that I was working at, we got an email from the president's office because the president had gotten an email from a board member saying, why is this universe? Why, why are you not on Facebook? 
you know, I, my kids are on, this was years ago. So kids were actually still on Facebook, but <laughs> why, why are, you know, my, my grandkids are on Facebook. Everyone's talking about Facebook. Why are you not on Facebook? And lo and behold, we were, we had a Facebook page and we paid a company to benchmark us against our peer institutions to put together a report to send back to the office to demonstrate to them that we actually are, we're on this, right? And so I think there's a certain level of like taking it for granted that, you know, we're, we're, we have, we have to be on all these channels, but then there's that not paying attention to it. But then the moment you have to care about it, you have to care about it, right? And so how, what are some of the things you, you, you tell people when it, when it's a really about that self-advocacy and that kind of defending your, your work, because there is that certain level of, Kind of taking it for granted and lack of respect for the the work that a social media manager has to do no one is going to advocate for you so you have to advocate for yourself you have to you have to get over this like we don't brag about ourselves we're taught to be humble and and all of that like that goes out the window and especially at higher ed because most of your admin the people that are in higher levels university presidents they're coming from an academic background where it is publish or perish. Like you are judged by how often you publish and where you are published and how your name is known. So, you know, I, I, this may not be for everybody, but this was what worked for me. It was like, you know, I, 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 my intention was to, to become a, a literature professor. So I, I had that publisher parish drilled into me. So when I moved over to staff and started doing marketing, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go to conferences and I'm going to, I'm not just going to attend the conference. I'm going to present. And when I present, I'm going to write up a press release and send it to the media office, like to put on the website that, you know, mm -hmm. university social media manager presents at national conference. Um, because that, that happened to me. I, you know, I, I, I was, I was working in the marketing office with, and it was, you know, marketing media relations, you know, you're all tied together. And I noticed on the website one day, it's like, there was an article, like, at, you know, you've got your little news section here at the bottom professor appears on podcast and i was just thinking like i was on five podcasts this year talking about our social media we didn't do this you know like you know uh and i went to, to, to the media relations person I'm like why can't you know hey can we start why don't we talk about what we do here there because you know the only people that read that are <laughs> you know employees of the university but they're the mm -hmm. ones that matter like we need to be bragging on what we do and she's like well if you want to write the press release <laughs> Have at it. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Um, I wrote a press release about me going on podcast. Uh, but that's the thing you've got to do because when you're in those meetings, you know, your provost reads that news, your president reads that news, your director of admissions reads those those news, uh, you know, those university news items. Get your name in there. Talk about what you're doing on social media. Um, find those avenues to to do it and and go out and and speak. At, at conferences and, and then write about it because academics respect that, you know, um, when they read about that, that gives, when you go into that meeting to like advocate that, you know, show off your new marketing strategy, your social media strategy, if they've seen that and they know it, it validates that, you know, your stuff and you're not just, you know, somebody fresh out of college that just, you know, is running the social, um, you're, you're, you're a professional, and, and the, the more, and you constantly have to remind people of that, but like yeah, doing that helps. And I think it, it, that makes a ton of sense. And I think you, one of the challenges that a lot of people in these roles have is I feel like, and it's, it's gotten better, but there's still the challenge that for many institutions, who's the social media manager, the social media manager is the young person that just recently graduated that is responsible for their own recruit like in admissions, their own recruitment territory, and they have to run the Instagram. Right. And they've gotten better about, you know, using student you know, ambassadors and, and crowdsourcing content and, and being, you know, and we, we haven't even talked about social listening. I think we should have a whole separate podcast about that piece. But, you know, I, I, I know I've been asked many times because I, you know, I've been on the speaking circuit at conferences all over the place for years. And it's like, oh, I just don't, I just don't know how to get started. It's like, just start, right? Like, go on the, go on the conference website, click call for proposals, fill in the blocks and click submit. Because if you don't, someone else is going to, right? And there's, I think there's this hesitancy to put yourself forward, but the reality is, is the barriers to entry at a lot of these conferences are not super duper duper high. You just need to submit the damn application. And these conferences, I've been on conference committees before, right? They want a a myriad of different levels 
of, 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 of presentations, right? So you could be that fresh out of college, social media manager, your first job, and you think, oh, I don't have anything to share. I'm like, no, your experience is valuable. Tell us about that day one experience. Tell us those things because we we need the basics and the, the higher level stuff as well uh, for a successful conference. So you may not know it. And kind of back to what we were saying earlier is about stating the things that we think are obvious to us, like go in and share. Right. I want to hear from younger social media managers who are new to the field because they're familiar with things I'm not. Right. There are, you know, um, TikTok trends and things like that that I'm just like, ah, I don't have the time to hit on. That. <laughs> like, I, don't, I, I don't have the I don't have the rhythm to do TikTok videos. So. I, I, I know I know how important TikTok is and how effective I actually have like written in my schedule. Like I, I have to tell myself, like go spend 30 minutes on TikTok, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. because one, I, you know, I'm, I'm 43 years old. I, I have a full-time job and a kid and a dog and all of those things. Like I just don't have the time to, to really in, in, immerse myself in, in that. I, I can't be on every single platform all the mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we want to learn from, from the people that, that can uh, and are, are familiar with that, that, you know, give us the shorthand. What have you yeah. learned? And, and I think in the higher ed space specifically, I think for, for a, a first year, second year social media manager, like the types of conferences that you're going to get approval for travel for and whatnot, are a lot of the times the closer regional ones where, again, the barriers to entry are not as high for your type of content and tactical from the ground presentations actually perform really well there from a, from a just conference engagement perspective. I know I've, I have presented both levels of content at those types of conferences. And I will say that the more higher level strategic you get, the lower your performance is as far as evaluations and engagement, because people are actually there because they want, they want ideas to copy, right? Mm -hmm. And they want to, they want to see what other people are actually doing, not research trends, right? Research trends are more like the national conferences and the, the faculty and, and working, you know, high level administrators and that sort of stuff. So there is that balance, like find the places where, where you're going to be able to break through the clutter. And that's going to be a great spot for, for some, especially in their first or second year to get their foot, their foot in the door, get their face out there. And then the opportunities just start to come to you. And you, you actually get discounts to, to be able to attend those conferences. Like that was part of one of the main reasons I started doing it was like, I would get my, I, I'd like, oh, yeah, I want to go to this conference. And it's like, well, we don't have the funding for that. Like, well, what if I tell you that? I'm presenting mm -hmm. and they pay the conference fee. The school just has to pay travel. All right. Yep. Yep. I, and then, then I, that way I, I get, not only do I speak, I get to learn. I, I will say that one of the reasons why the first reason why I submitted a proposal to present at a conference was because the VP of enrollment walked into the admissions office one day and said to everyone, Hey, just so you all know, you know, travel is limited for things where resources are limited. However, if you submit to speak at a conference, we will always, always, always support you if you get accepted because, like you said before, faculty and administrators really respect that sort of stuff. And so for the VP to be able to say, so-and-so on my staff is presenting at a national conference on this stuff is really important. That's gonna, that is going is going to increase your, your pull on campus when you want to get more resourcing or you want to get a seat at the table. You don't want to just get table scraps but you want to be a part of the process is, and that's self-advocacy. And again, you mentioned it, right? You got to, you got to grow your ego a little mm -hmm. bit. I think so many people are, are, oh, well, you know, my work will speak for itself. Your work will not speak for itself. No, it won't. <laughs> and if you want to grow your, and not only that, like grow your career, if you want to move up, like having that, that name recognition of, of being somebody that goes out and presents and has as well, you know, shares their work. Um, it helps you so much. Like I, I would not be where I, I, in fact, like part of the reason I got the job working on invincible was from my Twitter feed because I was daily would tweet about social media marketing and, and my takes on that. But I would also like spice it in with like comic book stuff and like my mm -hmm. own personality. And mm -hmm. one day somebody from Amazon prime video messaged me and was like, Hey, you know, you're social, you're clearly a comic book nerd. We've got this new series. Would you let, be interested in coming to freelance on it? And Yes. <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs>
Awesome. Well, I, th this is all great advice and I hope that, you know, everyone um, is able to kind of take pieces of this and uh, advance their career, advance their work, advance the field of social media management and make it a, and continue to advocate and make it a more integral part of the marketing and communication plans um, at our institutions. Uh, for, for folks that want to get in touch with you and stay and pick your brain, stay in contact, what are, what are some of the best ways to do that? Yeah, um, I'm at JS Stancil on all the socials. Um, I'm most active on Twitter and LinkedIn, but you can find me on, on TikTok. You can find me on um, uh, on threads. You can find me just about everywhere, but just at JS Stancil. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again for, for taking the time to, to join us. And for our listeners, all of the resources we talked about will be in the episode notes. And we will see you next time on FYI. Bye.